Okay, so this is the third in our series of videos about the IGCSE Computer Science pre-release for May 2018. In this one we're going to look at a mixture of task 1 and task 2, particularly looking at the stock levels. So, the first section of code is just the same as on the previous video. Where we start to see a difference is here in, in the, uh, the while loop, the validation part we looked at. So what we're trying to do now is if we do come across a zero in the stock levels for a particular item, give the user a warning saying, for example, that that product is out of stock and that they should pick something else. So I've decided to add it in as part of this while loop that we had in the previous video. So I've simply added an or because I'm checking two conditions. Either this could be an error or this could be an error. And depending um, if both those, uh, sorry, if either of those conditions are met, then we will hit this error message here. Your choice is out of stock or an invalid option. And then we'll ask the user to input a value again. So let's have a look at the second half. It looks pretty horrible, uh, but if we break it down, it's really not too bad. This section here is literally copied and pasted from what we did on the previous video to find the choice position. So we looked at this index method which looks for the index of an item within a list. So let's just break that down. The user choice is what I called my variable here for what the person's typed in. I'm looking where that appears within the component names list. So if somebody was to type in P7, it would go 0, 0 1, 2 and get that, that value 2. OK, so imagine where I've highlighted in blue, we've just got the value 2 now. So it's going to look in start level square bracket 2. So hopefully you know what that means. It, we look in the stock level list, 0, 1, 2, and that's where we're looking. So if I had put in P7, we'd have a 0 now. It's going to compare 0. Is that equal to 0? Well, yes, it is. So in this context, we'd, we'd get an error. And it would carry on with this code and ask me to re-empty. OK, so that should handle this uh, chance of having a 0 for one of the products in the stock list. The only other thing we need to add in now is, assuming they get out of that loop and type in a valid product, which isn't out of stock, then we need to take one away from the start level. So if they choose a P3, we just want to subtract one from the, this value here. So how do we do that? Well, again, we're, we're looking in the start level list. Within the square brackets, I can now use this choice position variable we made, or I could, again, copy and paste this whole section of code, but it's a bit hard to, to get your head around sometimes a, a big uh, statement like that. So I'm doing start level of choice position becomes equal to start level of cho choice position minus one. So that su should subtract one from the value. OK, and then everything beyond there is the same as we had in the previous video. So we calculated a, a total cost. So let's run that code and try it. So we'll deliberately try a P7. And there's our error message, your choice is out of stock or an invalid option. Then if we try one of the others, or, or if I cho deliberately choose something that's not in the list, it will keep repeating that while loop until we choose something within the list. Now, we can. I, I've done a series of printouts at the bottom of my code here just to test it out. Or if you're in an IDE like Thonny here, we can look at the, the variables tab to see what's happened. So in my customer choices list, we've stored P3, which was the, the correct choice. And in the prices list, we stored 100, which is the price of that component. And if we look at the start level, the original value for P3 was 12, and that has been reduced to 11. So that all seems to be working correctly.